Hello everybody and welcome to another Live Stream Friday. Oh, what's wrong with my voice? I don't know. <laughs> um, anyways, if you're new here, then this is basically a live stream that happens every Friday between 1.30 and 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we get to hang out and I'll show you new goodies and answer questions and basically interact live. So they tend to be very fun and the more people can join the merrier because like there are more things to show you guys and to answer and to basically clarify. Anyways, um, if you're re-watching this, don't worry, I'm always uploading all of the live streams. So usually about two or three hours after the live stream is done, this will be fully uploaded if you can't make it anyways. But yeah. So just to let you know, now I have Snapchat, so you can add me on my Snapchat. Everything is linked in the description box down below. I usually show you a little bit. It's a little bit like a vlog. I don't really show everything that's happening, but I show like small snippets of what's going on, and I found it to be very fun. So if you're a subscriber of mine, just add me and let me know who you are so that I can follow you back. That being said, if you have followed me last week, then you know that I was waiting for the Juvia's Masquerade palette. Um, and I finally got it. So here it is. As the title says, I'm going to be talking about that. Um, and other things that I wanted to show you, I'm going to make swatches, are some new foundations that have been released. Um, some of them recently. So one of the, one of it is the Kevin O'Quan, the Etherealist Skin Illuminating Foundation, and it's in EF01. Then I have another one from Chanel. I don't remember the formula, but I'm gonna check it in a moment. But basically, it's the new one, the long wearing, uh, full coverage matte one, and this is in shade ten. And then I have from Cledipol, it's the Radiant Cream Foundation. It's the new one, and it's in the shade I-10, which is the lightest shade. And then I have just one random from La Prairie. It's the Skin Caviar, and this one is in Soft Ivory. I should have got in Tender Ivory, which is the lightest shade, but I uh, then, like, I forgot. I got mixed up between Tender and Soft Ivory. Anyways. Um... I also have some Vizier palettes to talk about and show you guys. If you want to see looks that I did with this, you can check on my Instagram. I usually post my looks and makeup breakdowns there. Um, I also have the new Kat Von D lipsticks. By the way, I'm not sponsored. I'm not a, you know, YouTuber that gets paid. So everything that you see here, I've purchase myself I don't get ever contacted for sponsorships or anything like that so just wanted to clarify that anyways this is the new project chimps by Kat Von D and I think that's about it um oh yeah I have the new Kat Von D concealer this is not the whiteout now they they didn't have the whiteout at my store or did they I'm not exactly sure, but they might not have had it that day. But the thing is that the white out and the light one, the formulas are chalk, chalkier than the other shades, darker shades. So I wasn't very keen on getting the white out. I'm probably going to get it down in the future, but I don't see myself using it right now. Um, I don't want crazy highlighting. I'm not in that phase. So I just keep purchasing it this one is already very 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 pale and it's already slightly chalky so because it has a lot of pink undertone therefore it's looking a little bit chalky when you blend it on your skin let's see um let's see if there are any questions hello hola so yeah i I'm just looking at the uh, chat box, and if you feel that I'm a little bit slow today, that's 
fairly accurate. I just came back from the doctor, so I'm a little bit tired. I have a little bit of caffeine here. I'm trying to be as awake as usual, but probably that won't happen because I feel tired. Anyways, uh, yeah. So probably I'm gonna start off with the Masquerade palette. Now, I've played around with the Viseur palettes, so I know right off the bat that they are extremely good. This one I have not done anything with, so I'm thinking that maybe I'm gonna do that. Now, if you see the Viseur palettes, I'm trying to figure out how, like what, um, so there is 57.6 grams of product in this, or two ounces, and this is actually made in China. So the Viseur palette are made in France. The quality is going to be higher. <laughs> this is like a bulk product. The Viseur is actually done in small batches in France so that they can maintain the quality. This one is, you know large manufacturing thing to sell like it's pretty but obviously the quality does not compare to Viseart. Now not everybody needs Viseart, not everybody will enjoy Viseart, not everybody will understand how the Viseart works uh, because the Viseart was primarily done for set makeup not you know Instagram makeup or regular day-to-day -day makeup it was basically done for uh, professionals so the Viseart has the beauty that you can create so much with it. Like, uh, you can just do a wash of color, and with HD cameras, it won't pick the pigment, but it will pick like a shadow. So, you can create shadows on the skin without it looking like there's product on. So, you know, that's just an example. You can do tons of things with the Viseart, but like, you can do your brows, you can contour, you can blush, you can. Um, eyeshadows, you name it. This is more like a beauty palette. Um, it's, you know, very pigmented. Uh, no, this is, this is the Masquerade palette. The Nubian has more, I believe it's more of a neutral palette. This is more like a carnival type of palette. It has, so I'm going to, break down and then I'm gonna do swatches and then perhaps make a uh, tutorial <laughs> if I have energy anyways uh, going from here this is called Zola and it's actually a turquoise it's I would say it's a warm tone turquoise it's not entirely cool tone because I can pick a little bit of gold undertone in this one then we have Dahlia which is a almost true electric blue metallics as this one they're both metallic then let's see does pick I don't know then we have Molly which is a warm toned green so this again has a lot of yellow undertone as I can pick it up with naked eye then we have Chi which is a uh, violet indigo almost color it has a lot of blue undertones then we have Makita, which is a warm tone violet, almost, it has a little bit of plum undertone, if you can tell. Then we have Zodo, which is sort of like a deep rose color. Then we have Calabar, which is actually a, I want to say a tarnished bronze with rose gold undertone. Then we have Bori, which is a, hot pink with pink with um, gold shimmer in it then we have Giza which is a warmed or neutral toned it's very much like a shell tone then we have Burkina which is a camel mm, camel taupe color a lot of caramel undertone then we have Cairo which is a Marsala orange burnt color with um, the same fine gold micro shimmer as the Bori then we have Ada which is again a almost a true tone terracotta with a lot of orange undertone 
Then we have Daya, which this is hard for me to say what it looks like, but it's, I want to say it's a shimmery nude. Then Zulu is almost like a cross between Burkina and Ada, but it has more, whereas this one has a lot of red undertone and orange undertone, this one has more orange undertone. Then we have Casablanca, which is a true bronze, I want to say almost a cool toned bronze. It has a lot of gold, but it's still not warm. It's not a coppery bronze. It's a real true bronze. And then we have Fulani, which is a warm toned brown. So that's that. I'm going to do the swatches. To be fair, I'm going to be putting a primer on my arm so that the swatches end up more true to tone. And hopefully that's going to help. The Vizier palettes are very, very, very gorgeous. I actually knew about them when I first started in makeup artistry, but it was pretty hard to get them back then. And they were, you know, still up there in price. I mean, when you think about the quantity that you're getting, they aren't actually per, per shadow, they're cheaper than MAC, the pans, but still it is a big investment when you look at it like, at least here it's $85 with tax. So it's, it is a little bit intimidating when you can get, you know, palettes like this for under $30 if you have a coupon. So, but yeah, they are, the quality is, you can't compare it. These ones, when you blend colors, they don't become muddy. They actually stay in a way separated, but they're blended together, if that makes sense. Like you can tell the transitions of the color. It doesn't become like murky, weird colors like many eyeshadows can. Anyways, I'm gonna start doing the swatches, hopefully. I'm gonna actually do cool, cool tones first, like everything from here to the first two rows and then the second two rows. So, First one, it will be Chi. As you can see, I'm really pressing hard and there is a little product coming out. I'm not sure if you can tell, but that much. Like I had to really press there. And look, like there is a primer here. So you really have to pack these eyeshadows for them to show through. Which is again, that's not really that high of a quality. It's a very nice palette for like Instagram looks or like, you know, fun looks if you want to experiment with different colors and you don't want to invest that much or you're a beginner makeup artist and you want to build like a kit with unusual colors. Um, this is pretty neat or as a gift is pretty neat, but I had to put several layers to achieve this, which for me, it's not very good quality. So anyways, the next color is Mali. So this one was Chi. It is a cool toned violet. So it has, it looks blue and it looks a little bit violet. It's hard to tell. I would call this a cobalt indigo. So the next one, let's hope that there is more luck. It's Mali. This one has better pigmentation. But again, one swipe and it's kind of muddy and patchy. So it doesn't really apply evenly. So I have to like pack, pack it on, which I mean, for the price is okay. If you look at the price, it's acceptable but still if you're talking this from a professional standpoint and eh, like there will be its limitations um one second i'm gonna grab my little tin to clean the brush I'm cleaning with the Cinema Secrets so that I can 
continue. And I'm trying to apply these eyeshadows only with like flat top brushes. So I'm cleaning beforehand two brushes. Again, I want to apologize if I appear a little bit slow today. I'm just very tired. <laughs> So there we go. So this is Molly. Again, it's a nice color. As I said, for the price, probably you can't get that much better if you're interested in funky colors. Again, it picks up very little for the amount, for the pressure that I'm putting on. So, there we go. It shears out very, very fast. So there's like little pigmentation there. But I'm not going to be more redundant. There you go. That's Dahlia. So that's like a sky blue metallic color it's a little bit more deeper than a sky blue but still that type then i'm gonna go with zola which was that turquoise shade what's annoying is that this needs a lot of packing anyways there's zola on the skin it translates more blue than on the pan. So if you're thinking that you're gonna get a true turquoise out of that palette, I would I would say like reconsider it because this is like a warm toned blue, sky blue. This is like a like a cool toned, a little bit more intense blue, sky sorry, sky blue. This is like a I want to say lizard green with a little bit gold in it. Now I'm going to take Makita, which is the darker toned violet. Now this one is really, really patchy, like really patchy. This needs a lot of applications. Anyways, there, better. So as you can see, this one is a warm toned violet. It has a lot of purple plum undertones. It's metallic, like all of these are metallic. The next that I'm gonna take is that matte rose color, Zobo, which seems to be better. So let's hope, well, this is the color performance that you get when you have packed your brush. So, I mean, it's, again, for the price, it's pretty okay. So there you have Zolo, which on my skin, it translates like a really deep rose, but it's very cool toned. I'm going to clean the brushes. By the way, don't always trust the swatches that you see on Instagram because mo many times they use filters to amplify the colors. So what I'm seeing here on my hand look nothing like the swatches that I saw over Instagram. Like these aren't as vivid as what Instagram was or the pictures on Instagram were portraying. Another thing is that Often, like the swatches are very, very packed on, so probably even more than what I'm showing. So that is unrealistic uh, color expectations or color payoff because you will unlikely or not likely use that amount on your eyes, and if you do, it's probably on your uh, eyelid and not like on the blending. So I don't know how well they will blend if they are this patchy. That's why I'm gonna put them to the test later. Yeah, that's the 
um, Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleanser. I actually have the one liter bottle, but um, I find this little one to be quite handy. Anyways, the next shadow that I'm going to be using is Calabar. This one. This has a little bit better, well, it's still patchy, like, but this one is way better than the others already. So it seems like the warm, warm tones start to be better. So this is Calabar. And then the next one, I have to prime. By the way, I'm putting primer because without primer, it was very hard to get it to stick. So that's the reason I'm putting a primer on. Um, taking Bori, which was this hot pink with a little bit of gold micro shimmer. And this one is very dry, like I had to really, really scrub it. So there you go. Again, this looks very little like what I saw on Instagram. Like this one is actually quite dry feeling. I'm not sure how well it would blend. Like I, I have a bad feeling about this one. So this is the first two rows. Again, the best shade out of those, I would say that it's Calabar. It applied way more smoothly than any of the others. Um, maybe the second to best was uh, Mali. So there is something about this type of shimmer or formula that makes it a little bit easier to apply. Now oh, I need to get makeup remover for my hand. One second. So where have I put my makeup remover? There. No, I wouldn't say that. So far this palette is not impressing me. Like, I wouldn't feel bad to sell it. For someone who needs these colors I personally I bought it for the warmer tone like the ones that we're going to show or I'm going to show you right now so if those perform well then yeah I can maybe say that this palette is nice but otherwise I'm honestly not impressed they feel Kind of cheap quality which of course they are cheap ish but i mean yeah i don't know and you know guys i don't usually bash unless <laughs> something is not really that good like i don't want to create false expectations about products there is already enough of that in instagram like false expectations everything is photoshopped not everything but like a lot of things are photoshopped and a lot of things are portrayed as what they're not so i don't want to perpetuate that in this channel so no matter how popular a product might be i'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's good if i don't think that it is now, this might be, as I said, good for someone who's not a professional or someone who's just wanting, like, to have colors to play around. Or, you know, if you don't want to buy something, like, from dollar store, you want something a little bit better, you want colors, you want stuff to play around, or this is good for a teenager to make, a, like, a Christmas gift or something like that, then, yeah, I mean, why not? That sounds like a good idea. Anyways, another reason why I don't do swatches with my fingers on this one is because with the fingers, it's not really realistic as how you're going to apply these shadows. And usually with the fingers, you can pick way more. But at the same time, it doesn't translate as nice on the lids. Like, it's unlikely that you're going to use these ones with only your fingers. Like, 
it will be hard to blend anyways. So the next color will be these two rows, which are more on the warmer, orangey tone, rusty tone almost. So the first one is Giza. So there you go. Mm. It's an okay, like, let's see. Oui, there. It's an okay shadow, nothing special. I mean, I would say it's a nice blending color. So this one is okay. The next one that I'm taking is Burkina. So this one. Now this one is nice. Like this one applies very, very well. I mean, I'm impressed compared to the others. Yeah, it has some patchiness, so you have to apply some layer on top. But I mean, it's a big improvement from the two previous rows. The next one is Cairo. Here. Yes, the, the reddish ones apply way better. You can tell there, like I'm applying the same pressure and the same amount of times of swipes on this than on the other colors. And you can tell that they are, these are intense. I didn't need to pack them on, which is very nice. Like I was interested in the reddish shades. Now the Cairo has a lot of micro shimmer, which makes it look cheap. That's, that's the only downside is that this shade is gorgeous rustic color but as you can see it has a lot of that that little shimmer that can be annoying because it's hard to combine with other things and it's hard to blend into other things but if you want to use it as its own shadow on the eyes then yeah it's probably nice but yeah that's just that's a personal observation then we have ada see yeah definitely you can see the pigmentation is way better on the reddish ones now there is way more fallout on the as you can see on these ones than these uh two top rows which are the cooler tones now probably that has to do with the formula being a little bit different which also makes it more powdery and uh more pigmented because there is more product coming out of it so they're like slightly creamier if you wish now i'm gonna go with dahlia again very beautiful payoff this one has it's this one translates as a almost coppery color on my skin like coppery gold so this one is on the pan, like I said, it's a terracotta with a lot of red undertones. On my skin, it translates into a rusty red color. The next one is Zulu. So this one. There. Now, this one is a little bit patchier. And a little bit more sheer, so I need to pack it on. But again, it's a nice color, and this is more orangey undertone than this one. So this one is has much more red than this one. The next one is Casablanca. Again, this one, very beautiful color payoff. This is a true orange a uh, coppery color it's a i want to say that this is perhaps the most unique shadow that i have seen maybe this one and this um cairo so casablanca and cairo like um i think that they are very very nice in terms of uniqueness like so far all of the other shadows they aren't as unique so i don't see them like wow they are very nice i like the warm toned they behave way better than the cooler toned but they aren't that impressive except cairo and casablanca they are actually quite unique so the last shade is fulani and this one is supposedly to be a very basic brown yep 
as I'm seeing here, it's, you know, it's almost on the sheer side. It's a warm tone brown, nothing special about it. It's more of a, you know, lining color or crease color or something to bring together the palette to make it more, um, I want to say, attractive to people so that it's not only um, fantasy colors, if you wish. So anyways, this is the warm, warm side of it, the two rows. So it has one to three metallic finishes with the highest metallic metallicity in Casablanca. Casablanca reminds me very much of the skin frosts from Jeffree Star. It has that same type of texture, almost wet cream powder. Then we have one, two, three, four mattes. And then we have like one that's matte, but it has that micro shimmer in it. It's not, it's, it's not a subtle micro shimmer. It's pretty obvious, but it still remains matte. So yeah, I want to say about this palette, the two top rows are okay-ish. They aren't really impressively performing. You have to pack them on. Probably they would work better with a base that's from the primary color. So if you're like focusing on blue tones, it would be nicer if you apply like a blue eyeliner underneath to really make these colors pop. Whereas the these two bottom rows, they they perform well on a neutral base and they're more blendable and much more creamier and pigmented. So I would say that this palette is worth for these two rows below. And you can get, you know, for a cheap price, you can get like more interesting colors to just play around. So if you're new to using fantasy colors or new to using uh higher impact colors then this is a nice palette because you can try out and for yourself if you like these kind of colors without investing into more expensive brands and then of course if you like this kind of looks and you're more comfortable using it then you can upgrade to higher end brands to make your money's worth um these also for example are good thing to have if you're having like your nieces over or your kids or something and you want to create like some kind of uh, facial tattoo or like a mask or some kind of you know like facial painting for kids this is a nice thing to have because they're relatively easy to use you don't have to have special uh, equipment to use them or special primers or anything like that and they wash off just like makeup so i think that that would that is a nice thing to have if you're having such events um so yeah i yeah exactly for halloween that's a good thing that's a good point it's a very good palette for halloween if you don't want to invest into more expensive things because it has pretty high impact colors in here without it being expensive because this palette, I think, with a coupon that I got retail for $29 or something like that. So, I mean, you can't really beat it in terms of uh, quality with price and the variety that you get. I mean, you can make a pretty neutral, work-safe look with, for example, Fulani or Dahlia or Giza or Burkina or even Zulu, even maybe Calab Calabar. And then you can, like create smoky eye as well by using like Makita and Fulani and then adding a little bit of black or a darker brown. You can create more higher impact with Zola and Dahlia, for example, and then adding a little bit of Giza and uh, on the underline putting Cairo or Bori or, you know, like there's a lot of options to do with this. If you aren't looking for the most versatility in terms of blending and multi-purpose use, so this probably will be enough for most people. I hope I, <laughs> I made myself clear. I'm not in any way saying that this is a super bad thing. Don't buy it. I'm just saying that it has its place 
in terms of usage so i would not recommend this if you're a professional or you're used to professional quality and you prefer something that's really blendable first swipe color um doesn't look muddy or murky or patchy or anything like that but if you're someone that likes to collect palettes or likes to have different colors um isn't necessarily using bright colors that often but wants to venture out or you're just a collector then this is definitely a nice thing to have it's like very beautiful packaging it's very sleek again it feels cheap but that's the point of it it's a cheap palette it's nothing out of the world or it's it reminds me a little bit i think it's similar to the sigma palettes and you know the likes that aren't that expensive and are you know large mass uh, production basically so yeah but for the red tones i would totally recommend it because you have a lot of different options for red colors um in terms of how this compares to the lime crime or the Rena um, anastasia modern renaissance the anastasia has much more better quality payoff and blending capability it's also more on the cooler side of reds is not as orangey as this palette then with the lime crime again the same thing lime crime is a little bit cheaper feeling in the quality compared to the anastasia one but still has a higher color payoff than this palette in particular it's much more easier to blend i would say again the reds in lime crime are much more high impact than these ones and much more less of a rusty feel to the whole palette this is a very different palette from the lime crime or the Anastasia. So if you have the Anastasia or the Lime Crime and you think whether you should get is get this or whether you will be having the same thing in terms of the reddish tones, you will not have the same thing at all. This is much more of a leafy, earthy type of reds, whereas the other two are more of a rusty, grungy, uh, very rosy tint on their reds. So I hope this was helpful for the description i'm going to remove the whatever is there um yeah if there are any questions please ask away i'm going to be reading them right now i'm going to also make the swatches for the viziart palettes um and i'm talking a little bit about them hello mouth Muffy just arrived, by the way. You okay? You okay, kitty pie? Yes, you are. <laughs> so. I have to clean. I guess today is the Whoops, now my team got stuck. Oh yay, great. Yeah, I was gonna say, I guess today is the day of swatches, which I mean is good. I think. Oh well, I can't open my, my tin, it just got stuck, so. I'll have to do with whatever there is here. Hello, kitty pie. What you doing? Huh? Are you kitty boy? Yes, you are kitty boy. Yes, you are. So I'm thinking I'm gonna prime again because it's not fair if I'm priming for one and not the other. Now Muffy went on my toes and he's actually licking them. Oh well, Muffy loves to lick my toes for some reason. He thinks it's fun. Well, maybe it's fun. Well, I might to tell him what's fun or not. Muffy, you wanna come say hi? 
He said no. <laughs> he doesn't want to come. Whatever. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I can't open my tin. You know, I have the little tin where I'm putting the the brush cleanser. So I'll have to just dip it into the... Yeah, he's licking. He loves to lick my everything on my skin. I don't know why, he just enjoys licking. <laughs> uh, actually, I know why, like... It's part of their preening process. So birds like to lick you because that's like they're cleaning you, your feathers. So that's what he's doing. He's cleaning me. All right, Muff? 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 Yeah, okay. He said, yep. <laughs> so anyways, the first beauty is this one. This is the VZR Dark Mats. Now, a lot of people were complaining that the packaging is boring. This packaging, as a professional makeup artist is very, very practical because it's square. It's easy for me to hold on the hand. And also the first and foremost point is that it's transparent. So I can see when I'm laying out the kit on the table, I can right away see which colors I have compared to, you know, this, which is closed. I would need to open all of the palettes and lay them and that would take too much space. So as you can see, like this is very bulky for me, for me, <laughs> for me to go around with. This is very comfortable, fits on the palm of the hand. Therefore, I can just you know dip and apply without having to you know put it down or something like that. So this is the first one that I bought, and the second one is the neutral mats. Sorry, I'm opening it so that you won't get the glare. And I know a lot of people would say like, ah, this is boring. This looks boring until you apply it. It's the least thing from boring. If you know what you're doing, you can create such gorgeous things with this. I actually used the other day this gray base. And I mean, I'm not a gray person for eyeshadows, but this was just gorgeous. It just looked stunning. So anyways, in this one, you have a, a blending or transition color, then your medium tones, and then your darker tones. And you have from, sorry, we have a chopper here. Yeah, that's a pretty large chopper. So there is a white, there is a somewhat of a uh, cream, a darker cream and then a salmon kind of uh crease color i would say crease color you can use it forever but yeah then you have a camel color a brownish caramel color a rusty color warm brown or neutral brown rather then you have like a darker taupe then you have a true taupe then you have a warm gray and then you have a black or neutral like this is it's it's called a neutral palette because it has a little bit of a combination of neutrals warms and uh, cool tones now they do have cool matte palette which is a true cool toned matte palette but I don't have it I have these two today that when I get those others I'm gonna showcase them anyways the other beautiful one is this one. So if you like everything fall, rusty, leafy color, earthy color, you will probably love this one. So there is like a true orange rusty color here. Then there is a, almost a pumpkin orange color here, a tangerine orange, a more plumish uh, red, a warm toned green, like olive, and then a... Uh, leafy green this one is it's like greenish brown then you have a camel brown you have two plum violets and then two blues which are slightly warmer toned so this is more of a sea blue and this is more of a uh ink blue so there's that i'm gonna be starting off with the dark mats 
So this doesn't have color names. So I'm going to be going, um, what am I going to do? Uh, um, I'm going to be going row by row, okay? Just a little bit. There you go. And I barely dipped the brush in this thing. Like, that's how good they are. So the second color, I'm making like smaller swatches so that everything will fit on my hand. So this is the first row. Again, what you see is what you get. I hope you can see properly. So the first row. Yeah. And to the second row. This one needs a little bit more application, but still, it's very even, very smooth application, no problems at all. So if you're someone that appreciates quality or enjoys much better quality, you'll probably enjoy these palettes. Now, bear in mind that these palettes were made as a professional product first and foremost so it won't have the appeal of the uh, you know instagram mass made palettes so this is the second row again you get what you see this is very i like busy art because the colors that you see on the pan is what you get. For example, in this one, the colors changed quite a lot when they were applied on the skin tone, so it makes it a little bit hard to estimate what's going to look on someone. Like one color in particular I can think of was that turquoise. Like for me, it looked very turquoise and it had a gold undertone, but on the skin, it looked more of a, you know, baby blue so it was very hard like if i'm doing makeup on someone and i'm wanting something like a warm tone turquoise and then i apply it and it turns a baby blue it's like i have to wipe everything off so that that's why i like busy art because what you're seeing here is what you get no matter the skin tone it's just the color will not oxidize the color will not change it will get like what you see so that's again probably that's why the price is here so now we're going on to the last row. So this is the ink blue. This one is a little bit harder. Okay. So I had to pack a little bit on. So this is like a greenish blue. It's like, like a sea blue. So it has that property to it too it's yeah anyways i'm blabbing too much so now we have the green one. Oh my gosh this green one is stunning and then we have the khaki color or the olive color wow this is gorgeous look at this so let me see if i can properly put it there so last row about like this as you can see what's on the pan is what you get on your skin there's absolutely no difference especially on the naked eye like on the camera is a little bit hard to show you exactly what's happening because the colors are changing a little bit but when I'm looking at this is like wow I'm like getting what I want like for example this one I would have expected it to look much darker on my skin because I'm so fair like I was expecting it to 
somehow oxidized but you get really a true pumpkin color like it didn't change at all so dark mattes absolutely recommend it i've already done two looks with this i truly truly recommend like if you have the money and you don't want to waste money around with like these kind of palettes and you're someone who enjoys quality and enjoys good <laughs> good makeup then you will not regret this they have shimmery ones i'm probably gonna get my hands on a few of them in the future especially when uh sephora has sales or like the vib rouge coupons or something like that i'm gonna probably grab it then so this is the palette the packaging that it comes in i find this packaging very very beautiful for me it's very minimalistic very professional looking clean lines straight to the point so professional preview professional makeup palette paris that's it um it says it's uh, 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 highly pigmented smooth and homogeneous texture easy to blend no fallout long stay can be used with water to correct eyebrows and if i believe it was you know free of parabens and things like that so you get 24 grams of product in one of these so again highly recommend it now we're gonna go with the neutral mattes which i personally like to i mean i'm usually more of the type that enjoys brighter colors so i was tempted and i wanted to get the bright editorial which is their neon palette or their you know brighter color palette but i was like eh, i'm gonna start with the neutrals first and build up from there because i always go for brighter colors if i can and then i'm left with a <laughs> excessively bright kit and not enough base colors so i was surprised that i actually love these base colors because normally i don't um you know i just like bright metallic shimmery sparkly things so anyways i'm gonna start by using this lower portion with the first row so again as you can see what you get there is what you see I didn't apply enough. Second color. Third color. That one. Fifth color. And for white one to sh really show on my skin, it has to be highly pigmented because normally they just disappear. They just blend into my skin and brighten the skin, but you don't see like a stark white. So anyways, there you go. As you can see, what you see on the palette is what you get. And I'm, I'm probably sounding like a <laughs> Viseart salesperson. I mean, I wish that they would be you know, doing sponsorships or something, but I don't know, I'm not sure if they do, but I personally just like it very, 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 very much. So onto the second row. There. And one of my favorite colors the rusty color. Sorry, I have to clean the brush. So that's the second row. If you can tell, out there is the second row, and 
here's what it looks like. Again, as you can see, for example, the reddish tone there, it's exactly what's on the pan. It's exactly what you get on your skin. Which is rare for many colors. Like usually they deepen or they change undertone once you apply them on your skin. This, this set just doesn't. So I'm going to do this in reverse. So from this one to this one, because if I start here, I'm going to uh, murken up my brush and, because it's a black color, which is quite intense actually. So, yeah, I'm going to apply, I'm going to actually do it over here on my wrist. There's one. This one is a true gray, like it has true grayish undertone, which is, oh, if I tell you how hard it is to find a gray that has like perfect gray undertone. Anyways, so this is the last row. It has a very, like a true gray undertone and this black is very good, also it's very creamy, no chalkiness, no, you know like some blacks can be black but they're having like a gray undertone or almost like a white talk, talcum undertone. Well this one doesn't have that, this is like a pure black color. Then we have like a warmer brown and then we have like a, a taupe with a little bit of gray undertone in there. So let me show you. There it is. And this is the gray. Whoops, the camera isn't picking it up. That's weird. Anyways, these are two colors. So this is our neutral matte. Again, it might look boring, but when you look at it, it has like interesting warm colors and very interesting transition or blending colors and then like a unusual set of darker colors which one of them is like very very gray so you can create like a very cool toned smoky eye or cool toned liner with it and then you have like this contrast of like reddish with very very gray uh i want to say corpse colors so yeah I think they are stunning, they are beautiful colors, and um, they do sell, I want to say this out there, they do sell half palettes, so not with these shades, but uh, they have like six colors and it's half the price, and in those they have three sets, they have one that's a gray black set, one that's a... Uh, neutral brown set and one that's more on the orange rusty colors so if you don't want to invest in a full palette you can start out with those mini palettes um what else they have so in terms of brighter colors for those of you who are interested they have the editorial brights which are mattes neon or matte primary colors so you have your primary blue primary green primary red then your magenta your cyan um primary yellow so you have these true pure colors that you can blend in order to create more colors or you can layer on top of other colors in order to add undertones then you have the shimmery bright colors which these ones are more to create fun looks um they're very pearly, very high impact colors. So you have like your bright bubblegum pink that's shimmery. You have your bright uh, lettuce green, bright blue sky. Then 
Then you have your bridal palette, which is a combination of some high impact colors with very neutral and very satin colors in order to give like a glow and dimension to the eyes. So if you're someone who's doing a lot of uh, bridal makeup or a lot of, uh, you know, low key like graduation makeup, then you might be interested in that kind of palette. Then they have a Sultra Muse, which is satin warm tones. It has a little bit of a darker colors there, but they're mostly medium to light tones. Then there is a, I believe there is a Paris Nudes or something like that, which is more of the nude colors. Again, very satin. That's the most boring palette of them all because it doesn't have a great practicality if you already own the others. Um... And then there is a jewel palette which has uh, true jewel tones with metallic finish. So if you're interested in doing, like you want emeralds, uh, topaz colors, um, rubies, um, like gemstone colors with a lot of shimmer to it, you will be interested in that palette. Oh, and then they have the, of course, the cool mats which are, you know, true cool tones like true cool grays and uh, true cool violets true cool beiges um and everything that's cool toned again i personally really really love these palettes i will be changing all of my kit into those palettes so if you're interested in purchasing my previous palettes so i have some tom fords and I have a lot of MAC shadows. I'm going to be putting them up for sale on my blog. Among other things, I might have a Jeffree Star palette, which many of you know which one. Uh, I'll probably put that one up for sale as well because I don't really have that much use now that I have these busy arts. I mainly bought those because I was like, you know, wanted to try something new and what's on trend and cool but I just found that I'm not like the ones that are on trend are neat like I enjoy like I truly love my Anastasia palette it's a super palette to go on a trip because I know that whatever I'm using there is gonna match me and whatnot but again <laughs> I don't want to sound like a broken record but the Vizier palettes are out of this world um anyways another thing besides the eyeshadows it's this gorgeous 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 rusty red lipstick which i'm gonna be using in a moment and oh yeah we have foundation swatches for those of you who are not interested in eyeshadows which by the way i wasn't into eyeshadows like for myself for a very long while because I have very very bad eye allergies and they were always like burning or watering or something even with many many medications but now they are more or less stable so I can wear more eyeshadows I can't wear them every day because otherwise my eyes will swell up but every other day it's pretty much safe for me um, and also because I moved here and I'm gonna again start doing makeup on others I was like yeah I'm interested in getting like a better kit I have changed my tastes I've changed my methods of doing makeup I've changed my um, like techniques and what I like dislike so whenever that happens my kit changes <laughs> so you can take advantage of my, of my, how to say, my face transition into something else by grabbing stuff for much, much cheaper. Anyways, let me check the name of that uh, Chanel foundation because I don't want to say something wrong. Um. Me. doesn't want to load okay weird okay now it's loading so I 
I haven't tried, I've tried all of the others except that Chanel foundation. So the name is Le Teint Ultra Tenu. So Ultra Wear Flawless Foundation. So it says this fluid long wearing foundation glides on smoothly for a seamless second skin effect. A light diffusing complex creates natural luminosity while absorbing powders leave a perfect matte finish. And the shade that I got is the lightest is 10 beige, which has, which has more yellow undertones. If you are, or if you have strong pink undertones, like truly strong pink undertones, you might want to check number 12 beige rosé. It's not that much darker. It just has more pink, which can make it oxidize a little bit more, at least from what I tried. But anyways, I'm going to show you, show you the swatch of the Kevin Aquan first. The Kevin Aquan is very beautiful, but I would not purchase it myself. And the reason being is that it's, in my opinion, it's a foundation for someone that already has pretty good skin. In my case, that's not it. So it's very liquid and it sets into a pretty nice finish, I want to say. It's quite nice. So I'm grabbing a little bit. Oh, here's my arm. I hope that, yeah, you can see. So here's the foundation. It's very lightweight. It has, I want to say, a light medium coverage. Sorry about that. Like I still have, <laughs> I still have eyeshadow left. I'm going to remove it. There it is. So this is, at first I thought it has, it was a very yellow undertoned foundation, but it has, I want to say it's more of a neutral warm foundation. It's around an NC10. So if you're NC10 or even NW10, but you don't have that much of a pinky undertone, like more on the neutral, you know, going back and forth between pink and yellow you will probably enjoy this one there you can see damn it's not showing through like anyways there so that's the kevin aquan the etherealist in the shade in the lightest shade so zero one it also, like I said, it sets. So this doesn't set completely matte. It has a radiant finish, but it does absorb or control a little bit of the oil. So it's very good for summertime if you have a normal skin or if you use a lot of sunscreen and your skin ends up being oily because of the sunscreen. This is a good foundation without it being too absorbing. It leaves a very skin-like finish. So it's almost like it covers the pores and blurs out things and uh, it just it's not sticky it doesn't remain wet on your skin which is another nice thing this has i believe hyaluronic acid so it's quite moisturizing i mean for a foundation um and yeah like i wore it yesterday and i i pretty much enjoyed it it wasn't bad the next one is the chanel one so the ultra wear foundation Again, this is very liquidish, and it's in the shade 10. This is much lighter. So, sorry, this, now that it has oxidized, I would say that this is better if you're NCNW 12 to 13. And this is the Chanel. So the Chanel has much more yellow undertone than the Kevin Aquan one. Again, if you're very pink undertoned and you want to use the Chanel one and you're approximately the same level as number 10, you want to try number 12 because it's not that much darker, just maybe half a tone because of that undertone. So here it is. The Chanel one is an NC, I want to say, well, this one I want to say now <laughs> that it's an NCNW 14 or so and this is an NCNW 12 to 13. 
Again, the, the Chanel one looks like it has pretty decent coverage. And the next one I'm going to show you is from Le Cur uh, sorry, Cle de Pop, and this is their uh, Radiant Cream Foundation, or the newest one. If you go to the Cle de Pop counter, it's their newest one, and it's the lighter shade I-10. There. So I-10 is actually ivory. It's, I want to say, a neutral tone. So they have an O, which is an ochre. And ochre has much more yellow undertone. Then they have beige, which is more of a neutral. And then ivory, supposedly, it has more of a pink undertone. But because it's Japanese brand, they don't tend to add a lot of pink because Asian skin do not have that much uh, primary pink undertone as Caucasian skin. So anyways, there is olive tree. So this is the Kevin Aquine Etherealist in 01. This is the Chanel Ultra Wear Foundation, the new one in shade 10. And this is the new from Cle de Peau, the Cle de Peau Radiance Cream Foundation in I-10, which is their lightest shade. And they're, they're all of them approximately the same uh, depth. So they're, I want to say if you're between NC and W12 and 15, this will work well for you. They're just slightly different undertones. So the Kevin Aquan now appears to have more pink undertone. The Chanel one has more of a yellow peach undertone. And the Clédipo seems to be the most neutral one out of the bunch. And I'm going to be showing you La Prairie one, which isn't the lightest shade that they have. But anyways, I'll be showing it to you. This is what it looks like. La Paris is always luxurious. Like, I'm going to be purchasing it probably at some point just because, honestly, it's one of the most gorgeous foundations ever. So. So there's La Paris. La Paris is, again, on the same range of depth of undertone. Sorry, not undertone, the depth of tone. So, soft ivory, it's hard to tell. Like, I want to say it's an NC15 to NC16, something like that. It's a little bit darker than the rest. But, uh, I want to say maybe these two are the darkest. It's hard to tell because the finish is so different. Like these two ended up being much more matte. And this one is a radiant, which again, that's what its name says. And this La Prairie, it's more of a natural radiant finish. It's not marketed as such, but because it has, you know, the caviar and whatnot in there, it will end up looking like that. So anyways, that's that. I hope you've enjoyed this part. And now I'm going to be doing a look with the Chanel one, because that's the only one I haven't tried. So I can tell you, the, the Clinipo one is stunning. Like, it has almost full coverage. It's out of this world stunning. It photographs beautifully. It uh, covers the pores, covers any textural irregularities. It just makes you look like having a Photoshop skin. Um, the Kevin Aquin already talked about that one. It's more of a light, medium coverage, very, very skin like, very natural finish. It has a little bit of a radiance to it, but nothing, nothing you know, on top of your natural skin. Then the La Prairie one is very luxurious. It has medium to medium full coverage. It's very long wearing. Even on oily skin, it just stays on very beautifully the whole day. And then the most amazing thing is that when you remove it, your skin actually feels better. So it's you can feel that so it has done something to your skin, unlike most other foundations. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be trying the Chanel one which 
I was very, very interested in doing so. I'm gonna add a little bit of Dior Glow Maximizer, not that much, just buffing it a little bit on my skin. If I can find the proper brush though. Uh, where's my brush now? Well, I'm gonna be using this one. By the way, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I hope you can see me well. I might open up the window, um, what are they called? The blinds later. Um, so yeah, one second, I'm gonna be dampening the Chanel one. I'm gonna be trying the Chanel one. So let's see how this works. I'm going to be using my usual method, which is uh, blending it with one brush and then buffing it, or uh, no, sorry, buffing it with one brush and then blending it with the Beauty Blender, which for me is one of the best methods you can find. Because this foundation dries so quickly, I'm gonna be just using like small quantities. And this smells like Chanel. So if you have other Chanel foundations or Chanel skincare, this is what it smells like. So as you can see right off the bat, it has amazing coverage. Like, look at that. I don't think Chanel ever made something with such high coverage before. I'm, I'm not sure, but at least they didn't make it this pale shade. So far it covers pretty well. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Nordstrom's at uh, Pentagon City because honestly, the lady there was the sweetest ever sales associate, or I think she was a makeup artist for Dior. But I went in late and I wanted to try on, like, get samples of the foundations initially only of the Chanel because I was like excited that they had received those and I wanted to show you, you know, to show you guys new things. So I went in there and she was so helpful. Like she asked me like if I wanted some other foundation samples and I was like, yeah, actually, actually, yeah, I want to try others. So she went on and grab more pots and she was like really 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 helpful and in no instance she was trying to you know push me over buying anything like you know like a pushover basically which for me by the way if someone is like trying to sell me something it creates the opposite effect I don't want to buy anything like if people try to sell me things I'm like uh, nope, I'm not interested in your product anymore. It just, it feels a little bit desperate for me because if I want to buy something, I'm going to buy it. I don't need convincing out of, you know, someone selling their 
unless of course you know they're informing me like they have this deal or this deal that I might not have known of but like to be sort of pushy I know Neiman Marcus at least the Neiman Marcus where where I am they are extremely pushy to the point that I don't want to go to that store because they're right away when you go inside they come and ask you like do you want something and when you're like no they just like look at you up and down like almost like contempt look and uh, then they like you know follow you around and they try to push you products even though you said that you don't need assistance and you're not interested in you know like you just want to browse and chill and I don't know I just find that method of selling extremely annoying so look at the coverage I mean it's I want to say pretty good it's actually well probably you can't see it on camera because this camera isn't picking everything especially when it's cloudy like this but it's quite matte like I want to say that beforehand like if someone is considering this this is a matte matte finish if you don't like matte finish you will not like this at all like even for me it's quite matte probably it's a good thing for very humid hot days and also a good thing because i wear a lot of sunscreen so that can tend to give me more oiliness but it's extremely matte at least for me I'm going to do a close up now. It applies a little bit patchy now because it dries out so quickly into a matte finish. It's slightly patchy, if you can see there. As you can see, it's very cakey, like, no. And it's definitely dark, but I mean, I just want to show you the close up. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice. Um, but it's, I think it's a little bit too matte for me, too matte for my liking. Probably you have to work it faster than I have even though I you know use this one to apply and then blend so that it would go faster it's still Quite patchy because I wasn't fast enough. So that's a little bit annoying um, There's another chopper there is another one I'm gonna do just slight contouring with the blush maybe this foundation is one of those that need time to look better so you know it needs like the day and the natural oils from the skin to sort of like melt it into the face I mean it could be the case I'm not gonna powder it because if I do it's gonna end up too it's gonna be too matte and it's gonna crack I know that on my skin so now I'm just applying a little bit of skin frost by Jeffree Star in the peach goddess one i'm going to be using a little bit of a highlight today it's nothing special i'm just and i have to do the concealing under my eyes still this is a yeah good foundation if you have very very oily skin like you know serious oily skin Yeah, I probably should have worked it faster. Maybe that will improve. 
the finish of this foundation. Maybe using the NARS concealer. Yeah, now that I look it onto my skin, it's it's definitely way too dark and way too patchy for me. You know, a lot of foundations look good until you you use sunscreen with them so basically if you use sunscreen underneath like most people should use sunscreen and in a you know adequate amount which sucks because i mean the sunscreen doesn't suck but what sucks is that then foundations often might not look that nice or react that nicely to the sunscreen and no matter which sunscreen you use it's going to be the same situation so there and i'm going to be using my cover effects um pen in extra light and extra light so the neutral one uh, i'm trying to open this again okay I like this pen to do this kind of like cleaning up of the brows. It's very precise and sort of foolproof. It gives like a much sharper brow look. But it's still a little bit softer than the, con you know, the full concealer thing. And also it's easier to pack. And this is a great multi-purpose product. By the way, I purchased the Cover FX eye primer. So the one that you can put under your eyes that it's like a eye cream. And I just want to say, don't waste your money on that. Like, you know that I'm a I love cover effects. I adore cover effects, but that product was rubbish. It was so rubbish. Like it's honestly just like an eye cream. It's nothing special. So you can just buy off any eye moisturizer and it will do the job. So there's that. I'm going to line the lips and I'm almost done. Yeah, now the foundation has oxidized badly. <laughs> I mean, I look like an Oompa Loompa. I'm going to show you that. I probably you can see it. When you go further away, probably you can see it now. Yeah, it's dark. So I'm just lining the lips and I'm going to be putting a little bit more. Actually, I wanted to show you this one because I promised I would show. So this is a Kat Von D in light one. There. It's quite bright. It looks very dramatic because of it's there. But when you blend it, there it is. It's quite bright. It looks... It looks lighter because it has a lot of pink undertones and it's quite shocky finish. So it's, yeah. I mean, once you blend it, it looks better. It's like an NW05, almost white. So this, this is like, this is, I want to say almost white, but it has like a pink undertone to it. The white one that they have is clown white. So I don't see how anyone could have a use for it, like really a big need for it. Um, 
I mean, yeah, you can do the triangle highlighting, but that looks a little bit ridiculous on pale skin because honestly, you're already so bright that if you do that, it just it it just like looks like you have white thing underneath. It's I don't know. I don't know. It's it's nice to lighten other concealers. So if you have this, for example, you can add a drop of that or something like that. But to add it to this, I mean this it it just makes it into a more pinkier white color, which I don't know. I don't find the peel in it. I don't understand it as, you know, as mixing it with this, but on its own, it's a good idea because you can like mix it into foundations. You can mix it into concealers. Like if you have darker things that you need to lighten, that's actually a good product, but to mix it with the light one, there is really little reason why you would do that. Because it's already pretty light. Like, I wear almost white foundations in the winter time. And this is like almost white. So, well, I actually wear white. I mean, the MAC face and body in white. I used to, not anymore. So anyways. Another thing, trick I wanna say with liquid lipsticks is that they tend to look nicer if you apply them on top of a lip balm. Oh, hello, Muff. So yeah, let me show you what this one looks like. Hello, kitty, bye. Yeah. I'm changing one minute. <laughs> Whoops. There you go. I made a mistake. So this is the project chim project chimps. And excuse my lip, it's not. Project Chimps applies a little bit patchy, so there are like areas where they have more and areas that they have more. So, excuse me for that, I tried to rush it. There we go. And yeah, so this is the lipstick. And I think that's about it for today. I might do a look next week with the Vizier palettes. Today I just feel too drained for doing that. Um, what else do I have to show you? I think, yeah, that's about it. So if there's any questions, please ask away before the session is over so that I can answer them for you guys.
but okay so suppose there are no questions um thank you very much for watching if you have again any questions about the products or about pretty much anything about makeup just let me know in the comments down below or you can shoot me a, a direct message in instagram or my email again i have snapchat don't forget to follow me there I hope I can make that Snapchat funny. I'm still getting the hang of it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for watching and I'm gonna see you next week. Bye-bye.